Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is politics reporter Sarah Dorn. Sarah, thanks for coming on. Hi, Brittany. Thank you for having me. I want to talk about the latest regarding the president's son, Hunter Biden. He's been the target of the right for years now, but there are valid questions regarding his business dealings. Can you give us a rundown of all the legal issues that are surrounding the uh, Hunter Biden? Yes. Yeah, so today there was a new development being reported in the Delaware uh, U.S. attorney's probe into his business practices, which has evolved into an investigation into his taxes and a gun purchase that he made in 2018. The Washington Post reported today that federal investigators are nearing a charging decision, and it has been previously reported that those charges could include two misdemeanor counts of failing to file taxes in 2016 and 2017. Hunter Biden has since said that he has paid approximately $2 million in back taxes to cover those years. Um, but in addition to the failing to file taxes charges, uh, he is also facing a tax evasion charge uh, for underreporting income and another charge for making false statements on a questionnaire in connection with a gun purchase uh, that he made in 2018. He was admittedly in the throes of a drug addiction at the time, which he writes about in his memoir. Um, but again, federal prosecutors are reportedly nearing an, a decision on this on these charges. Uh, this is according to the Washington Post, which spoke to several sources but we do not have a timeline on when those could happen. However, it is obviously the case is coming to an inflection point at a very consequential time for Biden as he announces his reelection bid. Of course, and currently Hunter Biden is also involved in a child support dispute with a woman in Arkansas over his four-year-old daughter. What details can you tell us about that? So Hunter Biden has not publicly acknowledged his daughter uh, the woman who he allegedly had an affair with filed a paternity suit against him in 2019 when, again, he, he failed to acknowledge her. And a DNA test did prove that he was the father. So he agreed to begin paying child support. Now, Hunter Biden's attorneys recently asked the court, it's a district court in Arkansas, to lower the child support payments. Uh, he claims to be paying approximately $20,000 a month, and that's why he was called back into court earlier this week. Um, the woman, uh, who had, her, her name is London Roberts, um, who filed the paternity suit against him, asked the judge to hold him in contempt of court because he has failed to provide financial documents that, you know, she claims dispute his attorney's narrative that he is unable to make these $20,000 payments due to financial hardships. The name Hunter Biden has really been like a bolt of lightning in politics in the past few years. Democrats are way more hesitant to really talk about him, where Republicans are chomping at the bit, talking about investigations for the past few years. And you report that Clint and Jennifer Lancaster, who are the attorneys for London Roberts, the mother of Hunter Biden's child from this 2017 affair, are self-described active Republicans. So is this case now political? It certainly does introduce a political kink in the case, but I think that given this DNA test and that he has agreed to these child support payments, you know, there's there's no disputing that um, he he has not publicly disputed at least that he is the girl's father. Um, I but but yes, I mean, Republicans, you know, in in the House on on Capitol Hill have not sought to take on this issue with the paternity suit, but it does, you know, add to this feeling that Hunter Biden has a very sordid past and it raises the question of whether that will come to impact his father's presidential campaign as it did as it did in 2020 related to Hunter Biden's business practices and the allegations that Joe Biden as vice president could have influenced his son's business partners um, and, you know, made contact, for example, with uh, 
the executives at the Ukrainian energy company where Hunter Biden was serving on the board. That's, you know, a huge allegation that was really amplified through a 2020 New York Post story, the, the infamous story about his laptop that suggested that Biden did meet with those Ukrainian business partners. So it'll be interesting to see how, you know, Republicans spin the Hunter Biden narrative in attacking Joe Biden as the campaign gets underway. I do want to talk about the implications, especially as they relate to Joe Biden's reelection campaign in a moment. But he faces potential federal charges, he meaning Hunter Biden, stemming from a DOJ investigation in 2018. Does this paternity case have anything to do with that case? It, it does not, except for the fact that the mother of his child, London Roberts, did provide some financial documents that she has collected from Hunter Biden in her paternity suit. And through this child support, uh, child support dispute, she provided some of those documents to the Delaware U.S. Attorney's Office. And she also uh, testified in the case, I believe, as well. And congressional Republicans are actively investigating Hunter Biden's business dealings, including his art sales, which have been controversial. Has anything come from those GOP investigations yet? No, and that's largely because Hunter Biden has refused to uh, comply with the investigations. His attorneys have really recently launched a very aggressive campaign to fight back against them. They've called for a number of federal and state probes um, into what they say are violations of his privacy, um, you know, given given the disclosures from this alleged laptop, which Hunter Biden nor his legal team has actually admitted um, did belong to him. But they did sue the owner of the laptop repair shop uh, for distributing these contents. Um, this week, they they called for an investigation into Marjorie Taylor Greene for her her incendiary rhetoric regarding Hunter Biden. So, you know, the probes are they're doing all they can in the House Republicans, that is, in, in issuing subpoenas and requesting documents from Hunter Biden or the art gallery that in Soho that sold his artwork. But uh, so far, Hunter Biden's legal team has really blocked those efforts. Um, House Republicans have collected a number of records through the IRS. Uh, they're called suspicious activity reports um, or known as SARS and businesses or banks, I'm sorry, are required to file these with the IRS when they suspect any suspicious activity um, related to a transaction. And, you know, it's pretty commonplace for, um, you know, any large entity or individual that's handling a lot of transactions, especially with foreign entities, to have SARS filed against them. But that's a lot of the basis of the evidence that uh, the House GOP is going out, is is basing, you know, their narrative on and, and piecing together um, the Biden family's financial dealings and connecting them to the president. Issues surrounding Hunter Biden really were a thorn in President Biden's side leading up to the 2020 election. And as you noted, that infamous New York Post story, they posted a story about Hunter Biden's laptop. And at the time, it was largely labeled and dismissed as Russian disinformation. And Twitter even blocked it for a period of time. But since then, in 2022, organizations like the New York Times, as well as the Washington Post, verified the existence of this laptop. Now, as we sit here a few years later, do all of these questions and investigations regarding Hunter Biden put a kink in President Biden's re-election campaign? They they certainly could. And, and I expect the GOP, the Republican National Committee, um, Donald Trump himself to really hone in on these investigations and you know, promote the narrative that Bi Biden, as vice president, was directly connected to his son's business dealings um, and, you know, create the perception that there was some sort of conflict of interest there and that Biden used his connections to enrich his son and his various family members. So that's that's certainly a narrative that I, I expect to hear more about 
um, in the coming months and over the next year in the lead up to the general election, no matter who the GOP nominee is, if it's if it's Trump or someone else. Sarah, obviously, as we know, this story will continue to persist throughout the election cycle for sure. So I hope you come back on and update us as it does. Sarah Dorn, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Brittany.